and now as a leader in academia, he lives by that creed. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Kaslin. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. I got to tell you a Bob Wood story here real quick. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a great story. So we were so all the way back to 9-11. So when 9-11 occurred, what, 19 years ago, we, Bob and I, were inside the Pentagon. And with all the chaos and everything, for the last, for the days that followed, we really didn't know who was all involved in the casualties and stuff like that. We all, I was on the Joint Staff, so I was kind of two sides over. Bob was on the Army Staff right where the plane had hit. And we had heard that Bob was one of the casualties. And um, I think it was, 9-11 was on a Tuesday. I think it was like we were all working seven days a week then. Maybe Saturday or Sunday, I was standing in the hall. And then Bob walked down the hallway. When we looked at him, we thought it was a ghost or somebody. We thought, because we thought he was one of the casualties. And then when I saw him and I realized that he was, here he was, and he was not one of them, ran up to him and gave him a big hug. Um, but uh, we, those are days that are really, uh, incredible and experience that we knew that when that happened it was going to change life as we knew it today and part of that of course is um, how cyber has now been integrated into the battlefield into war field and into our lives not only on the military side but also on the civilian side uh, so as the uh, I'll talk a little bit about the Army Cyber Institute we stood up when I was the superintendent of West Point but what I realized in higher education is that the cyber area is just in its infancy. The potential for education in cyber and cyber matters is just growing and the demands are very significant. And I would be the first to say that we here, at, even at the University of South Carolina, um, I feel we're not even keeping up with those demands because there is so much opportunity that, that's out there that we can really expand into. But we are uh, really excited about cyber and the cyber opportunities in South Carolina. We are really excited about the proximity with Fort Gordon uh, right here in um, um, Augusta with the uh, Georgia Cyber Institute that is right here and all the other cyber synergy that really exists. And I want to talk about that because as I think about cyber in the University of South Carolina, we're trying to come up with a vision of cyber and what that would be. So it's just great to be here in the wonderful symposium, and I do want to thank FCA International for hosting it and for inviting me to speak today. I really, as you know, couldn't feel that this particular conference and presentation could not be more timelier. You only need to turn on the news to see what's going on in the cyber community, threats uh, from our adversaries and how they would attack and respond uh, to some of our actions. And that obviously puts an alert into all of us and in the civilian community and the education community, it really does as well. And then you know that there's a sheer level of cyber attacks that are conducted daily. That number is staggering. Those of you in this business know that for a fact. I, as an example, have been a victim of a credit card compromise over the holidays twice. So my credit card was compromised once, lost a couple thousand dollars, and we got, finally, we you know, worked with our bank and all that, and then they shipped us a new credit card, and two weeks after we got that, that thing was compromised as well. So those, that's the life we live in today. So I think it's just vital that we collectively seek answers to these threats and renew our efforts to continue to, to grow in this important industry. Like I said, before I came to West Point, I, I mean, before I came to the University of South Carolina, I served as a superintendent of West Point, and it was the the thought of General Odierno, who was the Chief of Staff of the Army at that time, to really put together an institute that would address cyber and the future of cyber. The cyber branch had not yet been established. There was some dialogue on how that was going to come about. But General Odierno had recognized that the Army Cyber Institute needed to be an institute that was going to create knowledge and that it was going to build public-private partnerships. And the reason we wanted to create knowledge because we knew the cyber industry was changing so rapidly that all of our reactions to what's occurring in, within cyber incidences is all reactive. And in creating knowledge, we wanted to get ahead of shooting at the duck, not shooting behind the duck. So that was their purpose, was to create knowledge and the research that they were supposed to do. And there was a very great synergy being at, the, at West Point with the cyber department that they had and the, and the education and the research work that was going on there. 
The public-private partnership piece is probably the more difficult piece, but it is a huge importance. And now that I'm on the other end of the military, uh, even though I'm a public institution, I realize how important it is for us as private enterprise and as you know, state-level public institutions to partner with federal institutions. And, and, and that synergy that can be created in a public-private institute, I just think is so important. And I just want to talk about that a little bit later because that's, that's a critical importance of the vision that we're trying to create here with the University of South Carolina. Um, but the Army Cyber Institute gives a, had, a, had a charter to innovate and outreach to provide a means to share, collaborate, and amplify its work. And as you know, it's closely tied to the Army Cyber Command, the U.S. Cyber Command, and the Army staff in the Pentagon. Um, as I said, I, it was, we put together the vision for where cyber is going for the University of South Carolina and South Carolina itself. We realized that it has to be based on partnership, and which is one of the reasons why I wanted to talk a little bit about the Army Cyber Institute because that is the heart of our Army's partnership in building these public and private partnerships. But first, before I get into all that, let me talk a little bit about some of the cyber activities that are actually occurring in the state of South Carolina. The first thing I would recognize is that Georgia is in the establishment of the Georgia Cyber Institute and what Georgia is doing and having uh, Fort Gordon right here with three cyber commands uh, right here on Fort Gordon. Um, Georgia, I give them a lot of credit for, for getting out ahead and building these public-private partnerships and the Georgia Cyber Institute to me is a great model of something that we would like to do similar which we already now have started in the state of South Carolina. So let me talk a little bit about uh, the South Carolina Cyber Institute. Its really initial focus is on education. It's a nonprofit organization which is dedicated to researching and codifying industry and government's best practices in cybersecurity. And it provides training and certification programs to our military, our state and local governments. Our, the, big, the biggest element of this is, is the programs for our K through 12 students, teachers, administrators, it also has outreach to ROTC and other private sector cyber professionals. The South Carolina Cyber Institute would be the vehicle through which we at the University of South Carolina deliver our programs of training and research. And the South Carolina Cyber Institute would also develop a statewide cyber curriculum, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, that would offer opportunities to train our future trainers, our students on cyber, cybersecurity. And not only that, for any of our students that are across the river here in Jordan, in Georgia that would want to take other academe, academic curriculum in cyber outside of the instruction they're receiving at Fort Gordon, that we would have a common core cyber uh, program and a cyber curriculum for them. Uh, if, if they're interested in doing that. So some of the current programs in, that we are working with in South Carolina are focused on education and, and research. So collaborating with the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education. So this is important. So we, we have the legislature that has a, appointed a commission. This, they call it the South Car Carolina Commission on Higher Education. They're the ones that provide for all of us in the, in the higher education business policy and curriculum requirements and things like that. So we, as we work with the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education, we are in the process of developing a four-year cybersecurity curriculum which prepares our students in Georgia to pursue cybersecurity post-secondary degrees and, and, and careers. And this is what I had talked about previously. That, uh, and, and I think, personally, this is kind of a, uh, kind of a stub and it's kind of a obstacle in our efforts in South Carolina to have this core curriculum established. It's not yet established, but it's putting us behind the power curve in, in partnering with students in Fort Gordon who would want to take cyber curriculum courses in the University of South Carolina because the commission has held us at bay until they can get this core curriculum approved. So we're, we are working very closely with them. We're working very aggressively with them to get this thing approved as quickly as possible. And once it's approved, then, then we want to enter into um, with the Center of Excellence at Fort Gordon to be able to have career cyber curriculums that they would be eligible to take if they so wanted to do it. Then we have this thing called the South Carolina Cyber Patriot. So the South Carolina Cyber Patriot is a national youth cyber education program. 
is created by our Air Force Association. It's focused on K through 12 students so their, for their careers in cybersecurity and other science, technology, and other STEM type of disciplines. Central to this effort is the annual National Youth Cyber Defense Competition. It puts teams of high school and middle school students in a position of a newly hired IT professional tasked with managing a network and a small company. So the top teams earn trips to the national finals competition where they can earn scholarship money. And the, and the uh, University of South Carolina Department of Integrated Information Technology, which is really our cyber school, the USC Inter Integrated Information Technology manages our Cyber Patriot program. Uh, and under the new st structure, it might get rolled into the, uh, the um, South Carolina Cyber Institute or just might stay where it is. Um, so University of South Carolina's uh, Information Technology also stood up another program, a cyber education statewide program and certification portal. So this has been launched with NSF-funded cyber portal in 2019. It's been a great success. Uh, its users are its pilot program logging more than 12,000 hours of training. The cyber portal deploys, it actually deploys virtual labs, a training manuals, a standardized curriculum to support statewide teaching and research uh, with proper resources for instruction. Upon the success of our pilot program, the cyber portal is now offered to any state educator, state and local official, military and other cyber professionals. Our cyber portal also enables participants to earn nationally recognized cyber credentials, enhancing their ability to find employment in the IT sector. Um, the NSF funded education portal, like I said, logged more than 12,000 hours of training in this pilot program. So we're excited about that, but this is something that we put up in order to um, the entire state has access to cyber, cyber education in, in their own cyber development. And in the end, it really enables par uh, participants to earn cyber credentials that are recognized at the national level. I had mentioned about this program to try to train our future trainers, our future cyber leaders. And um, South Carolina Cyber planned and delivered the 2019 State of South Carolina Cybersecurity Awareness Symposium, which was entitled Cultivate a Digital Culture, and it had over 175 South Carolina Department Administrator and government officials that participated in this. Uh, the University of South Carolina Integrated Information Technology provided training workshops on tools and protocols for participants, and they, and that, and they came from over 30 states, which we are very proud of. So these are a couple of programs that are some of the current programs that we have for workforce development and for outreach. As part of our military infrastructure and workforce development, the Cyber Center of Excellence here at Fort Gordon um, is the goal there is to partner with them with our cyber curriculum. And we think at the University of South Carolina, we're also part of a system that includes three other comprehensive universities to include the University of South Carolina at Aiken. So we're the Columbia campus there, the Aiken campus. And the University of South Carolina at Aiken with its Chancellor Sandra Jordan, Dr. Sandra Jordan, is really putting this together. And once we have that commission to approve the curriculum, then we want to partner in, uh, with the Cyber Center of Excellence. Let me talk to you a little bit about uh, critical infrastructure protection, if I could, because I think this is one of the most important areas and opportunities that we as a university have to really help develop not only cyber education at the university, but to really develop cyber education and awareness within the entire state, both on a public and a private partnership. So we are currently players in the upcoming Army Cyber Institute Jack Voltaic exercise that's going to take place in April in Charleston and in Savannah. And what we, as you look at, how many of you are familiar with the Jack Voltaic exercise? Okay, good. So, this, so how many of you are familiar with the one that's going to take place in April? Okay, a number of you are. So we want to play in that and it looks like we're going to be able to so that you, if you look at the, in Georgia with the Savannah Harbor and in uh, uh, South Carolina with the Charleston Harbor and the cyber incident that really collapses that particular infrastructure. We want to create the scenario and have, have asked the Army Cyber Institute 
to modify the scenario so that it not only has an impact on the harbors, but it also have an impact on Columbia and some of the infrastructure within Columbia itself, like our power grids or our big business or big database uh, capabilities and have a compromise. We've already done some, some work. We, the university, have done some work in working with Blue Cross Blue Shield and some of the other uh, 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 energy type of infrastructures to see where we can have some participants. But with the Jack Voltaic exercise, we'll create the scenario that will pull these public-private enterprises together to understand what actually took place, why did it take place, what are some mitigating factors that we need to put in place, what are some policies and procedures that have to be addressed, and then how do we go after this in the future from a public-private partnership. We think this is so critical that it can potentially really take the, the South Carolina Cyber Institute and expand it from its, small, uh, from its small education effort right now and really expand it so that it can really look at vulnerabilities within the state from both a public and a private perspective to understand where those vulnerabilities are and to put mitigating factors in place, as you know, whether they are policy, procedure, resources, infrastructure, or whatever. So we are very excited about that. Uh, and as a university, we, we see ourselves as a catalyst of bringing all of this together for our state. And that's one of the, one of the things that we, we're looking forward to doing. Uh, another area that we're working on is the South Carolina Workforce Development Plan, which is really designed, uh, designed to align talent with job markets. And we're working with the North, actually we're working with North Carolina Chamber of Commerce on this, as well as the South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. And some of the corporations that are working with us in this particular program is Cisco, Palo Alto, and VM uh, Ware. And we're excited about working with them. Let me talk a little bit about future goals, and, I'll, and then I'll wrap it up and uh, turn it back over to Bob or whatever questions that you might have. But our first goal in the future for outreach and workforce development is really to address the military infrastructure and to partner with the military infrastructure. The fact that we are like less than 60 miles away from Fort Gordon along the Aiken-Columbia corridor is a great opportunity for us to be able to partner with the three cyber commands that are located at Fort Gordon, the Center of Excellence, Army Cyber, and also the NSA Command. The second area that we're really focused on in the future, our future goals, is really to really analyze our infrastructure, our critical infrastructure, not only with the university, but the university can be the impetus of this, but to really analyze the critical infrastructure that exists within the state from all aspects and where its vulnerabilities are, not just you know, like to weather and stuff like that, but where are its vulnerabilities with respect to cyber and cyber attack? Uh, we, um, okay, and the third area is to have an infrastructure and research plan where we would create and execute an infrastructure plan to increase South Carolina research and development opportunities and capabilities for all stakeholders. And this is a key area for us as a university because we are a research, our one research university and as we pursue opportunities for research within the cyber community, whether it's in support of Fort Gordon or whether it's in support of uh, the Army Cyber Institute or wherever it's in support of, these are opportunities that we are looking forward to and we think that we have the ability to contribute in a significant way. And part of the infrastructure piece of that is um, the Jack Voltaic exercise, the tabletop exercise that we're very much looking forward to participate in uh, this April. Uh, I had mentioned the workforce development plan and working with relevant state and industry stakeholders, the South Carolina Cyber Institute will eventually develop a statewide workforce development plan that will meet industry's growing shortage of uh, certified cyber and IT professionals. This initiative was formulated following several years of industry feedback, which cited the lack of properly trained workers as a major impediment to uh, of locating some of these cyber workers in the state of South Carolina. Uh, the South Carolina Cyber Institute will utilize federal and state grants to fund these training and education programs that will help close the labor shortage uh, gap that we think we're experiencing. So in conclusion, let me share with you what we think this vision looks like for the University of South Carolina and the future of cyber here within the state of South Carolina and in this community across the river here in Georgia. 
So we do recognize that our proximity with Fort Gordon is key. And as I mentioned, the cyber corridor from Fort Gordon to Aiken to Columbia, anchored at Fort Gordon, um, is, is critical. It will allow us as a university to partner with the uh, Department of Defense and with, for their cyber needs, whether it's education cyber needs or research cyber needs, but allows us the ability to partner with us. Right across the river is one of the University of South Carolina campuses, the University of South Carolina at Aiken. And they are geared and centered and ready to have the education programs that are necessary for, for the education training that's net, that is needed um, at Fort Gordon. And they're ready and anxious to get started on that. Our governor has just released his budget for this fiscal year coming up. And it also includes a $25 million construction of the headquarters of a National Guard Cyber Battalion at, on the campus of the USC of Aiken. So as we're very fortunate in South Carolina in the National Guard sector to have a cyber battalion. And that cyber battalion doesn't have a headquarters right now. So we're excited that the governor said we're going to put the headquarters right there at, uh, within the campus of USC Aiken. So not only do we have the education uh, capacity to be able to partner with Fort Gordon, now with the National Guard headquarters there, it just creates a synergy of putting them right there with the proximity that they have from a military to military relationship with Fort Gordon, but also the opportunities that they have to partner with uh, the uh, USC Aiken and USC Columbia, which is just down the road. So we're very, very excited about that. And incidentally, on top of Fort Gordon being here, if you go about 35 miles south of Aiken, you, you, all of a sudden you find yourself on the Savannah River National Laboratory. And even though the Savannah River National Laboratory's main focus is nuclear hazardous waste and hazardous waste disposal, they have a laboratory of science that they're looking to expand in the future. And they, uh, believe it or not, they just put a manufacturing center on the USC campus as well. So uh, the, the growth of that area, the growth of that area, whether it's cyber manufacturing, uh, hazardous, uh, hazardous waste, nuclear power is just really something that we're really excited about and it's creating a synergy and a, and a buzz of activity. And then you take the corridor back to Columbia and Columbia is where you would find the South Carolina Cyber Institute, a public-private nonprofit uh, organization that will address the, the things that are necessary to secure cyber infrastructure for the state of South Carolina. Whether it's a harbor, whether it's a, a, a public power entity, whether it's big data business or whatever it is, you know, they're the ones that will do that. And to do all the other tasks that I had mentioned previously, particularly in education and in workforce development. And we're excited about that, to get that thing up and running and bring it up to the level it really needs to. So you, that's, and then you have the University of South Carolina with its R1 research capacity supporting research and providing education for the entire cyber needs and requirements throughout that quarter. And this is where we really are excited about where we really want to uh, uh, look towards the future and, and to get going. And then if you look south, you can almost make it a triangle going down to Charleston, uh, the Jack Voltaic exercise, for example, that addresses some of the cyber vulnerabilities down in the harbor sector down there. So that's where the future is. And that's our vision of where we're developing. We're very grateful the, for the opportunity to partner with our um, Department of Defense friends and other public entities that are involved in all of this. And I think it's really a bright future for not only us in the University of South Carolina and our education capacity, but it's really a bright future for public-private partnerships for cyber, cyber security and uh, preventing cyber attacks and things of that sort. So just wrapping up, um, I'm asking all of you to uh, um, be a part of this vision and whatever capacity you think that you've, you would like to help and contribute with, we would love to, we would appreciate your feedback, your input, and just whatever solutions that, intellectual solutions that you think are, would contribute to this, we would very much welcome them. And I think together, the greater the partnerships that we have, we can lead the way in forging a new cyber pathway in South Carolina and in the nation for that matter. So thanks you everybody for gathering here today and I look forward to working alongside you as we move forward in cyber future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We, we do have a few questions from back here, if that's okay. Yes, sir. Sure. And these are from the audience, so don't shoot the messenger back here, please. All right. 
uh, as you develop the University of South Carolina cyber program, what do you see as your top two challenges? Um, well, <laughs> so you, you have a vision, which are your ends, right? You know, first you've got to make that articulate, and then you've got to have ways and means. So ways and means are programs and resources, right? So everybody say, okay, well, where's the resource? In other words, where's the money to make all that happen? So that, of course, that's one of your challenges. I was very fortunate as a new president that the previous president had recognized that normally new presidents, when they come on board, have, have initiatives. And so they had put so much money away for some of these initiatives. And I think that this is a great example for that initiative to provide the resources that are necessary to be able to build the programs that are, that are there. The other thing I think is going to be a challenge is the public-private partnership. And those of you that have been involved in building public-private partnerships know that a lot of times, especially in the private sector, they like to keep their cards close to their chest, you know, because they don't want to be pub too public about their vulnerabilities uh, because it's a marketing issue. So we really have to build a public-private partnerships that are really based on trust and that we really have a good understanding of the common issues that are out there, how they affect both us in the public sector and in the private sector, and that we can build those relationships uh, to address them more effectively in public-private a partnership. So I think that's uh, that's another uh, uh, challenge that we're going to have in that area. Uh, the next question, and we only got a couple here, sir. Um, yeah, good. What what has been your first impact on the student body at the University of South Carolina as far as STEM? Do you see, uh, or is it too so soon to see if the STEM program is picked up within the uh, college there? Um, I don't really know if it's picked up. Um, STEM is very popular. Liberal arts is very popular as well. There's always the dialogue about well, should you be more science technology oriented or should you be more liberal arts oriented? And I'm really glad that there's got to be a balance between them. You know, as I, even if I go back to my Superintendent West Point days, you look at the core curriculum and it's really designed to give people the background and the experience and the intellectual acumen to be able to address a spectrum of issues. So, so having a STEM focus, strictly a STEM focus, allows you to go deep into a certain area, but it doesn't give you the breadth to address issues across the entire spectrum of issues that you're about to face. So I think there's a right balance to, to have a good, strong technology and science program and a liberal arts program so that you have that uh, adaptable background you know, maybe you're an inch deep, but you're a mile wide, but that gives you enough information so that once you recognize where the challenge issues are, then you can dive into them into depth. Uh, and I think that's one of the things. But I would say that I know, especially our engineering and computer science college is phenomenal. Its growth is magnificent. There's m tremendous interest in it. The job, the, the job hiring rate in that college is, the, I think, the highest of any of our 13 colleges that we have. I um, mean, there's people, particularly on the, in the uh, computer science side, that are being offered jobs even before, I mean, internships that they're getting their sophomore year, their junior year, and job offers right away after that. So um, that, that in itself attracts a lot of people because they know the job security that comes out of a, a, that type of education is very strong. Not so much in some of the liberal arts side, but uh, um, we do know that they're at the same time that we have a lot of interest in the engineering college and the computer science college, we also recognize that there is still a huge engineering deficit within our nation as a whole. That our nation is not producing the engineers for the requirement and demands that our economy and that our, that our nation requires of them. So, you know, there's got to be a balance out there somehow, some way, and I think um, we're going after it, I think, in the, the best way we can, but I don't specifically have the answer as how much increase or decrease is actually taking place, but it's something worth looking into. Yes, sir, as you know, we've got a mixed crowd here. So the question is, uh, what is the higher probability of, is it Navy beating Army or South Carolina winning the SEC East? I thought you were going to say, you know, South Carolina beating Clemson. We're from Georgia, and y'all beat us last year. Well, you know, South Carolina did play Georgia this year, if you remember. Yeah, they whooped us. So, and I think you were third in the nation at the time. 
I tell you what, I think I got this job in South Carolina. This is, this is a true statement. I believe I was hired because that when I took over as the superintendent of West Point, General Odierno was the chief of staff of the Army. And in the change of command, he said, Caslin, your number one responsibility as a superintendent of West Point is to beat Navy. And at that time, we had gone 11 years without beating Navy, and our 12 years. And so we had to figure out what we needed to do to turn that culture around so that you had a winning culture that was embedded in discipline and mental and physical toughness that was going to win and win the right way and to build a culture of excellence that not only permeated our athletic programs, but in that really permeated all the programs that we had, academic programs and, and you name it. So three years, the third time we went after it since I got there, we finally beat Navy and then we uh, beat them three years in a row. So I left and then they lost, so. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, the, when I told that story during the interview for South Carolina, knowing that South Carolina has, hadn't beaten Clemson in, in not quite the same number of years, but there was a burning desire among Gamecock fans to get back into the swing of things and learn how to beat Clemson again, I'm convinced that's why they hired me. So, um, so we, we really do got to figure out what it's going to take to beat Clemson. Now, to be the Southeast champions of the Southeast Conference, um, you know, I mean, football in the Southeast Conference doesn't get any better than any place else in the nation. Just look at LSU as an example. But there's some incredible, just incredible teams that are out there. And to be in the midst of it and to be on the same field with those teams is really an honor. But uh, we got to figure out what it's going to take to put the right chemistry in place uh, and, in order to have teams that will win and to win the right way. And we're looking forward to that. We will I think do you it, did, though. sir. We'll you beat it. Kentucky last night. Yeah, that's right. Number 10 in the nation would be Kentucky. And then we lose to Stenson, you know, a D2 team. So go figure. All right, I'll turn it back over. Yes, to sir, Thank we appreciate it very much. Thank Please you. Please welcome Thank back to the much. stage, yeah. Lieutenant General Steve Clemson. Bob Wood. Conformity, thank you on behalf of ASEA and this wonderful audience.